Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. In this one we'll talk about how to implement role based authorization in a Blazor server application. So this video is actually or well we could consider it in the series on Blazor server authentication and it is one of the I would say last here in this series to actually get the fundamentals of how authentication and authorization works in Blazor server applications. So if we want to start that, the idea is or what we want to achieve here in this video, we are right now on this counter component and we already see that we have this authorized view. However, on this authorized view right now, we don't apply any policy or anything else. So by default right now, it would actually uh, take into consideration that the user needs to be authenticated in order to have access to this specific component. Now, what we want to do now instead is we want to make this counter available only for administrators, but not for other type of users or users that have no role at all. So we just want to restrict this counter to be visible only for, for those users who have the administrator role in our application. Now, in order to do that, we will once again have to see how we set this up. It's not really complicated, but we have to do a few steps. And then the second part is how we how do we actually get the roles in our application? And usually you would probably have user management thing uh, or a user management part in our application where an administrator or an existing administrator could assign roles to other users or things like that. However, we will not set this up and we will actually make this role assignment as a part of the user registration process, exactly like we did with the claims in just a video before that. So if you want to check that video, I will leave the, the, the link in the description of this one. And there's also a card here somewhere on the screen that might redirect you to the video on claims based authorization in Blazor server application. So let's get started with that and let's first of all set up everything that we need here uh, in our Blazor server application. Now, the idea is that when we register identity, that actually adds some default identity services that we already have used, like the user manager or the sign in manager that we have used to sign in the user. And that's okay. But if we actually want to work with roles, well, then in that case, we have to actually add an additional service. So in this case, we'll just go here, make a little bit of space. And just before add entity framework stores, but by the way, add entity framework stores ensures that um, all repositories for Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity uh, are added. Uh, so that we can actually interact with the SQL tables that we have underlying or that Microsoft ASP.NET Core identity uses uh, in our database. So right before we say that, we say that we want actually to add role. And here, if uh, sorry, add roles. Now in this add roles, that's, this is a generic method and we have to specify what type of role do we actually use? And we will use the default identity role, which we specify here when we add identity. So that's actually what we need to do. So that's the first step. If you want to add role-based authorization in your Blazor server application, the first thing is to make sure that you also add the role services. And this will, as we can see here, make available some services related to roles, including this role manager. And that's actually the service that we will need just a little bit later. So that's the first part that we need to do. And for setting up this backend part, at least in this program.cs class, that's pretty much it. So there's not really uh, anything else that we could uh, do here. So let's, for that purpose, instead go over to our register part. Because here in our register is where we will also assign users to roles when they first register. And we will make a, a field, actually an input form, or an input field in a form where the user can actually just type uh, the role that they want. But I guess you get the idea, this is just to get the role in our application. The way that this might work is probably we'll have a dedicated section of your application where administrators can assign roles, can add roles or add new roles, can maybe remove roles and things similar to that. So let's have here, first of all, this public uh, string and let's call it a role. And remember that that city we actually used for the claim that we used to restrict or show only parts of the applications based on a certain claim or based on the value in a certain claim. So in this case, we will just say that, okay, this is also required right now. 
Now, what we would actually have to do is, of course, in our login form or register form, for that matter, we can just copy this over and uh, just duplicate it. Now, the only thing that we will do here is that this is for input for input role and also here the same thing. And then also here the same thing. Right now, that should make uh, our field role available in our application. So now let's go to the code behind part of, of, of this thing. And as said, we need here to inject another service. And that service is the role manager. So let's have it private uh, read only. And we'll call this uh, role manager of identity role, of course, and role manager as the name of our field. And the exact same service we need to inject via dependency injection. By the way, when we added this add role in the program.cs, it made or it registers all the services in the DI container. So you can just inject them wherever you need them. So in this case, uh, we will need here the role manager of identity role like that. And let's call it role manager. That should be something like that. And of course, we need to assign it uh, to the field. Just like that. Cool. So right now we have everything going. Now, the only thing that we need to do is go in our on post async method where uh, where we actually get when user clicks on a register. And here we already have some actions like we create, we create the identity user for that user uh, using this user manager. Then we add claims to the user and we will steal the user manager to add the claims to the specific user. And then what we do is actually uh, we uh, just simply um, uh, verify if those two operations are actually successful. And then uh, what we do is, well, we sign in the user. So to this entire process, we just want to add here some additional features that would actually right now create a new role. So let's say here for role equals new identity role, because that's what we actually want uh, to create right now. And uh, let's, we'll take the value for the role from the input. So input role that would be that would be the name of the role that's actually just a very very simple uh, string now the next thing that we need to do is we need to add our role to the database because we have a table which is called asp.net roles and we need to add this new role to the database so let's have here var add a role result equals and we await and in this case we use the role manager to create a role we have this create async method and we can just specify the role that we have just created and then uh, the other thing that we want to do is we want to add the user to the role that we have just created so we will have here a var uh, add user role result equals and that would be await uh, user manager in this case we use the user manager and here we have this add to role async and uh, that's what we actually did. So we need to just uh, use right now uh, the actually the user that we already have, which uh, is the identity, sorry, in this case, identity. And then we can uh, specify once again, the input uh, dot role, which is exactly the role that uh, that we have. Cool. And that would actually add our user to, or add the role to our, um, user what happens behind and actually i want to show you this uh, let me go here to sql server object explorer because i guess this is an important thing that you would have to take a look into is that if we go to this uh, where is it i guess it's this uh, database uh, and we have here a few tables and you see that we have the asp.net roles we have of course the asp.net users and we have the asp.net uh, user roles and if we look into that uh, in the columns, we can see that that's actually a bridging table, a joining table, because we have a many to many relationship between a user and a role, because a user could have several roles and a role could belong to several users. So what we do here with this final step is actually we add an entry here in this ASP.NET uh, ASP user role table. So that's what we actually do here. Now, the only thing that we need to add here is we will actually change this check and we want to make sure that add a role result 
succeeded and also make sure that the other one succeeded and uh, user role result dot succeeded let's maybe i don't know bring this to another line to make this just a little bit more readable and if all these conditions are, are met then we just simply sign the user in so that's how we actually get the roles into our application and that's how we assign roles to a certain user so the last piece of this puzzle is of course to actually check and see exactly uh, how we can make sure that that counter is available only for administrators so in that case uh, let me just go back to the counter and uh, actually you see that we have this authorized view and in this authorized view we have seen actually during uh, the video on claims based authorization that we can specify a policy now of course we could even use a policy here but when we want to work with roles there is also this option we have this roles parameter and here you can actually specify um, different role names separated by a comma uh, that should actually be taken into consideration and we want uh, to make sure that we this one is displayed only for the administrator role of course if we would like to display that for an additional role we can just put here a comma and then actually that would be it and that's it that's how we implement role based authentication or authorization here in our blazor server application but don't trust me let's run this application and check out exactly how we can do that so we'll go right now through the entire process we'll register two users one user that will have a, a role that is called administrator and user that will have another role that will call probably something like user or or something like that and then we'll actually see uh, how differently this application behaves depending actually on uh, what role this user has let me bring this to the other screen and uh, yeah right now of course we are not logged in at all so if we click on the counter we cannot see that uh, if we click on fetch data uh, i guess we cannot see that either um, yeah we cannot see that either but it took a little bit longer because uh, it worked with the database so uh, let's click or uh, click here on register so the first user uh, let's just use uh, this one it would be let's uh, type in a password let's provide a city let's use for the claim space authorization and uh, let's make this user an administrator and we register the user and right now everything is okay we are logged in we can see that and if we click on the counter we can see the counter and we can actually log in which is fairly fairly okay now let's now log out here of this application and let's click on register again and here let's have this user.example.com which is the second user that we will register let's uh, specify here also the password uh, let's have the city we take berlin this time and the role let's make it user so we can re register and logged in everything's okay but right now if we go on the counter you see that you are not authorized to view this content so we achieved role-based authorization in a Blazor server application just like that. However, before we wrap up, I just want to close this application. And I want just I just want to go back to this program.cs uh, part and just take a look here where we have this services aid authorization. So we have added a policy that requires a certain claim. Now, if you want to actually create a policy for roles or a more complicated policy that would combine maybe certain roles with certain claims, because that's also possible, you could simply just come here and add, for instance, uh, an additional uh, like uh, options dot add the policy. And here it would be, let's name this policy administrator only let's just copy that over to make sure that uh, that everything's okay and then we can have here like a policy and then uh, policy dot require role you see that we can require a role and the role that we would require would be administrator so that would be it right now we have added a new policy and theoretically if we if, if we go back to our counter component we can even check that or change that uh, to take in a policy 
and then we have to specify the name of the policy and the result would actually be exactly the same so let's let's just run this application one more time and then just check what actually happens um because it, it should behave exactly the same way so there should not be any difference right now uh in how this application works so by default i guess we will already be logged in because we are yeah this user.example.com and if we click on counter you are not authorized to view this content so let's just log out uh let's then click on log in and here i would use this email and this password because i know that this user should have this role and if i click on counter right now you can see you can click the counter and just use that so as a summary here is when you actually want to use roles in order to um to display content based on on, on a specific role you could either use this roles uh, parameter and specify the roles that you actually want uh, to include it would be like that we want to include the administrator or you can like we did with claims just create a policy for that and by the way here in this policy you, of course that takes in a real action so you can simply just uh, use curly braces here and specify a composite policy that requires a role that requires a claim or several claims so you, you can really play around with that and achieve that level of granularity that you might need in your applications so if you want to do this route and create a policy in which you require a role no problem then you can go back where uh, you want to actually do that in your authorized view and instead the roles just use a policy like we have already seen and it will work the same so you have then two options or you have a big freedom to choose from one of these two options when it comes to achieving role-based authorization in your blazer server applications and this being said thank you very very much for watching and uh, if you think this content might be useful for you or for others feel free to just share it uh, with your peers with with your colleagues with your friends wherever you might think that there is an audience that might find this content useful for them don't uh, be shy and share that they will probably thank you for that and also if you didn't subscribe already please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell button because we do a lot of stuff here on this code wrinkles channel not just tutorials we do a lot of live streams and other cool things so you want to be notified whenever something new happens on this channel so just also make sure to hit that notification bell button and uh yeah last once again thank you very very much for watching and until the next time i wish you the very best